Welcome everyone to uh, VisionRecordingStudios.com and Vision Mix Studios, our YouTube channel. Today I want to do a video um, about setting up the, your template and your routing in Studio One when you're doing analog summing outside of the box. I've had three subscribers ask me about this. I have yet to see a video um, on YouTube that incorporates Studio One in, in analog summing. Um, there's a couple of videos um, with Pro Tools and Cubase which I'll leave some links below in the description so you can check those out as well. And I think I'm going to do a Pro Tools video as well. But this is for Studio One specifically. So um, recently I have upgraded my studio to do analog summing using two pieces of gear, the Dangerous Music D-Box, along with the Dangerous Music 2-Bus LT, which is the 16-channel analog summing box. And I will do another video um, to explain all how you configure the hardware um, with your interfaces um, and the whole concept about analog summing that'll take me a little while to put together and to explain but for here if you're already doing analog summing or you already understand the concept and you want to know how to route your audio in studio one that's what this is about so let's take a look um, and I'll show you how to do it okay hold on one second here let's take a look so here is our basic session um, and let me just quickly show you what this uh, session entails it's um, just kind of a rock band here. We have a drum kit down here, basic drum kit, bass, guitar, uh, an organ, a piano, some background vocals, some lead vocals. Okay. So uh, in the past, uh, when you were dealing without, without doing analog summing, if you're doing everything in the box, your audio tracks would go out to your main output here. Um, and in between that, you may have some bus channeling, so on and so forth. With analog summing, the basic concept is you're going, you're taking your audio tracks here and sending them out discrete outputs on your interface, and we'll talk about that in a second, sending those tracks out your outputs to the summing box, in my case, a dangerous music, where the dangerous music, the analog gear sums the tracks and then brings it back in to Studio One on a two channels, on a stereo channel, and then what you're monitoring and what you're listening to is the post summed mix, okay, which is a little bit different. So we have to set up to our IO, our, our IO has to change a little bit. And let me show you that now and how we do that. So again, here's our audio tracks, okay. From there, the audio tracks are going to my buses. Okay, so uh, for example, I have a... Um, you know, a drum bus here, which all of my drums, with the exception of the kick and snare, is going to the drum bus. I have a kick bus, a snare bus, a parallel drum compression bus, a drum bus, which is everything but the kicking snare, toms, overheads, rooms. I have a bass bus, a lead vocal bus, a background vocal bus, a keyboard bus, and a guitar bus. Okay. My individual audio tracks are going to those buses. Here's my kick drums. There's an inside kick and a sub kick mic going to the kick bus. Here's my snare mic going to the snare bus. My hi-hats through my room mics, hi-hats, toms, overheads, and rooms are all going to a drum bus. Okay, bass is going to bass bus. Guitars are going to guitar bus, so on and so forth. Okay. From the buses, now these outputs are going out to what we call stems. These are the outputs that are on the back of your interface. Um, and then from there, they go to your summing box. So let me show you the I.O. Studio One Preferences, Song Setup. And if you take a look at your inputs, here's a, I'm using a Profire Satfire 40. I'm using two of those interfaces. They're eight channel interfaces that I've daisy chained together to give me 16 channels of input when I'm tracking live bands here in the studio. Okay, but you can do this with a PreSonus Project Studio. You could do this with a Motu 8-channel interface. You could do this virtually with any interface as long as you have outputs on the back of those interfaces, and most of them do today. So on the input section of my Sapphire, um, I have a path here, Stereo in 7.8. This is the return after the audio goes out to my summing box as it in the, in the analog box sums the sums the audio and brings it back into studio one it has to come back in on two on, on a stereo channels two pairs are in one pair so i brought it back on channel seven eight you could bring it back on one two three four five six seven eight doesn't matter i just chose seven eight this path is the talk back mic for this video so don't worry about that okay so you create one input for your return coming back into studio one on your outputs it gets a little bit more involved 
So my main outputs, I'm using the SPDIF on 11 and 12 on the back of my interface. Okay, that's what I'm using as my main outs in Studio One. Then I created a bunch of stems. Okay, this is where the audio from the buses, let me just close this for, uh, move this out of the way for a second. The buses down here that we saw along the bottom here, it goes from the audio tracks to the buses. From the buses, it goes out the stems, out the back of the interfaces, and each one of these has a stem. So to show you, I have a kick stem, a snare, a drum stem, a parallel drum stem for parallel compression, bass, lead vocal, background stem, keyboards, guitars, and effects returns. Those stems, I close this for a section, are the match up with these buses. So I have a P drums parallel compression bus, and I have a parallel compression stem. I have a kick bus, I have a kick stem a snare bus, a snare stem. It just keeps everything really simple and easy to keep it straight in your mind. So let me go back here. <clears throat> okay, so now there's some monos and there's some stereo stems. And because I have 16 channels of summing with the two bus LT, I can group instruments like instruments together and I have 16 channels that I can, that I can use for summing. The more channels you have, the better. Um, I would recommend you do at least eight channels of summing Anything fewer than that, it really doesn't make any sense. Uh, 24 would be ideal, but I'm using 16. Okay, so there's some mono stems and there's some stereo stems. The mono stems are the instruments that you typically would just pan up the center. Kick, snare, bass, lead, vocal. Typically, you're not going to pan those instruments. You're going to leave those up the center. So those, you can use mono stems, okay? Because I only have 16 where you can use mono, use mono, because you'll have more stems that you can spread out your instrumentation across. The drum stem is stereo because you have rooms and overheads and toms. You would typically do some panning. My parallel uh, drum compression is a stereo stem. Bass and lead vocal, as I said, are mono. So those are the first set of eight stems on my Profire Pro Sapphire 40 Focusrite interface. But again, I have two of those, so I've daisy chained them together. So here's the first unit. The second unit starts over here. So my background stem is going out on the second unit, my daisy chain unit, one, two. My keyboard stem is going out three, four. My guitar stem is going out five, six. And my effects return is going out seven, eight. So that's how you set up your outputs in Studio One. If you were only using eight channels of analog summing, you could forget this section right here. You would just be dealing with the first eight inputs, or excuse me, the first eight outputs. But then you wouldn't be able to spread the instruments out as much. You'd have to group things together, like all the drums, including the kick, snare, and maybe the bass would go on one, two. And then maybe your guitars would go on three, four. And then maybe your uh, vocals would go on five, six. And then your effects can go on seven, eight, <clears throat> if that makes sense. Okay, so that's your outputs. There's your inputs, your stereo in. Okay, once you have that, you can close this. So now in Studio One, if you click on this little input button, you can see the input. You can see my talk back here that I'm talking to you through this video. And here is our stereo input for 7.8. Because remember, the audio tracks are going to go out the buses. Out the buses are going to go out the stems. If I click the outputs, you'll now see here's all our stems that we just created, right? In the, in the I.O., here they are. I colored them in pink so you could see them. So it goes from audio tracks to the buses from the buses out the out the interface via the stems goes into the dangerous music box or any summing device sums the audio brings it back in on channel 78 right here when i hit play and you listen back to this track you're going to see signal coming in on 78 okay if that makes any sense i'll close the input and i'll close the output for a second now once it comes in on 78 it's got to go somewhere so what do you do the trick here is you have to create what's called a print track which is just an audio, a stereo audio track for the summed audio to come in on 7.8 and it's going to print to this track, okay? And what you, <clears throat> So what you're actually going to be monitoring is the audio coming to the print track. That's post-summing. And the way you do that is by using this little monitor button in Studio One. You have to have this enabled in order to hear the audio and you'll see it in a second. You'll see the, the signal coming in on the meter, Okay, so let me just play this back for a quick second so you can see the way the signal is actually coming in on the print track and it's coming in on stereo seven and eight. So let's take a quick listen. Longing and the pain through the sadness when you're sitting in the shadows of your shame. Through all the good intentions and all the broken plans. The so really 
Defender. Okay, so you can see the audio tracks have signal going to the bus channels, which have signal. Those are going to the stems, the outputs, and here they are right here. If I play, hit play again. And place him in here his we go. Hand. Got and then from there, it's coming in on 7-8. Let me close the outputs again. And then from there, that's going to the print track. When you it give right it here. all to him, gotten worse. Seen it time and time again. That's why you have to keep this monitor button on so you could hear the final result after it's been summed. Okay? So that is the basic way you route audio in Studio One to deal with analog summing. Now, the only other uh, kind of little tip here is... Remember, now that you're doing, now that things are being routed in this fashion, you're not using your main outputs as a main master out anymore where you'd put all your master bus processing. Okay. Your master bus processing now really goes here on the input 7, 8. So what I would typically put on my stereo bus, which if you've watched any of my videos, you know, I use Slate Digital VCC. I have any, oops, I have an EQ, Universal Audio EQ. I have another bus compressor and I have my tape machine that is now what used to be on the main outs is now on my stereo input so again if you can visualize the way the signal flows it goes in out of the two bus LT out of the summing device back into studio one and passes through this processing then goes to the print track over here okay so what you're hearing on the print track is post after this processing which is what you want so an easy way to think about it is think as the print track is really now taking place of your master output over here if you want to think of it that way that's the easiest way to think about it i feel okay so that's how you set up um a template in studio one to do analog summing again i'm using the dangerous d box and i'm using the dangerous music two bus lt the tube SLT is doing all of my summing because there's 16 channels of summing. I'm really not using the summing in the D-Box. I'm using the D-Box for more of the monitor section in the A, and D, A to D converters. Again, and I'll do a larger video, um, a couple different videos about analog summing, the gear, and how you hook it all up. But in the description below, there's going to be some links. I'm going to send you to the Dangerous Music website so you can do some research on that. And then also to a website, puremix.net. Uh, Fab over at uh, Flux Studios has a couple of really nice videos on how you integrate the hardware physically to your rig, along with showing you how to route it in Pro Tools and Cubase. Um, but there is no video for Studio One yet. That's why I'm creating this, and I've been asked to do this by a couple of people. But his Cubase video is very similar to the way you would do it here in Studio One. They're very similar DAWs. Pro Tools, a little bit different, a little bit more confusing. I'm going to do a video for our Pro Tools users as well. Um, but it does, if you've never done analog summing and you don't really know much about it, go read some of the information on these websites because it took me a while to wrap my head around the concept of how it works. And, and at first I thought, geez, it seems real confusing. Is it really worth it? I can tell you if you're willing to put the time in, it is absolutely worth it and will take your studio um, to another level. Um, but again, that's a, a debate for another time uh, because I know there's, some, there's people out there that will say, oh, that may, makes no difference at all. Well, I can tell you that it does. There is absolutely a sonic quality difference when you start uh, summing with analog gear. There is. Um, but again, that's for another time. People ask me to show you how to set it up in Studio One, and I wanted to show it. Um, I hope this is helpful. I hope I explained it okay. It is a little confusing, and I am still fairly new at it. So I'm still wrapping my head completely around the concept. Um, but I'm glad that I did it, and I am seeing the benefits in my studio. So uh, thank you again for subscribing, for liking, for sharing our videos. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, please send them to Vision Recording Studios at yahoo.com. Check out the links below. Go read up on the information, and if you need any help on getting into analog summing and you want to learn more about it, contact me. I'll be more than happy to help you. So until next time, uh, this is Dave signing off at visionmixstudios.com. Take care.